What's going on, everybody? Today, we're gonna talk mortgages. We're gonna talk about your house. We're gonna talk about interest rates and your house. But more specifically, we're gonna talk about how you shouldn't be giving all your interest away to the banks. I know a couple years ago, it was like everybody was buying houses. Everybody was refinancing their houses because it's cheap money. The Fed dropped rates. The Fed made money easy. Everybody rushed out. The housing price went way up, but it didn't matter because your rate was low. <laughs> is that the story you've been you've been buying into? Because if it is, you've been buying into one of the biggest lies you've probably ever been told. If you think low mortgage rates really saves you money, you're wrong. It might make your mortgage payment a little bit lower, but it isn't saving you money because you don't understand the volume of interest. You don't understand what the banks have always understood and that is how to make money. Banks are masters of making money. Let me just put it to you this way and then I'm gonna introduce my guest, Christy Van. You right now know that interest rates are high. I mean, if you were to go get a mortgage right now, I mean, you might be able to be high sixes with perfect, perfect credit, but you're probably gonna be between seven and 8%. That seems high, but it seems high because we're used to two, three, and 4% interest. So today, if rates are, let's just say 7%, and the bank down the road put a giant sign out front with one of those wacky inflatable flailing arm guys, and it said, fixed 30-year mortgage, 2%. Would you go wait in line? Would you get in that long line waiting for it? Would it look like Apple when they launched their new iPhone and people are around the building camping out in, in tents and everything else? It would. Everybody would rush out, they would get in line and they'd wanna get some of that good low interest rate. But if somebody went in that line up front and started teaching everybody how the volume of interest actually works, started showing people what the contract actually says that you're gonna sign the mortgage and how much interest you're really gonna pay. You wouldn't be waiting in line. You wouldn't even wait there 30 seconds. Matter of fact, you wouldn't have even showed up because you would have been like, ah, these dumb idiots are waiting in line to get one of those low interest rate mortgages, but they're gonna lose to the volume of interest. So today in this episode, Christy Van is gonna show you how to pay your mortgage off because why would you wanna give the bank all the interest when you can keep it to live a better life? With that being said, folks, I'm gonna introduce my guest, Christy Van. What's up, Christy? Hey, how are you? I absolutely love to watch you do your videos because you're, you are so inspired by what you're telling the people that, you know, that's exciting. And I get excited listening to you, uh, just the power you have behind what you're saying, because it's so true. People are just throwing away their money and they don't even realize what they're doing. You're absolutely right. And Christy, just for that reason, I've been really practicing on my karate kick. Can I show you? Sure. Before I do that, folks, I wanna ask all of you to help me out. And right now, right in front of you is the thing that says subscribe. There's a little bell up top. Check this out, Christy. Not too bad. It's all about that follow through. You gotta kick and follow through. Anyway, with that being said, folks, make sure you subscribe to this, sorry, this channel and you're gonna find out much, much more. But Christy, let's dive into this myth, this mystery. These low interest rates that everybody thinks they're getting a great deal, and when they go to their friends, they literally brag about this shit. They go to their friends at the bar and they're like, hey, I got one of those 2% mortgages. Man, oh man, I'm never getting rid of this mortgage. You gotta, you gotta bring the truth to this. It's sad. I mean, as funny as you're being about it, it is very sad because it is just, um, taking the American people for a ride. Um, I am amazed at people that come to me every single day. And if I have five appointments, four out of five will say, well, I got a really good rate because I'm at 4%. And you're like, oh my goodness, bless you. Uh, because 4% is actually 80%. And like you said, it's the volume. And you know, like that's not dirty enough, right? That's not dirty enough. They want to push it towards the front of the loan. So you're actually getting to pay that up front. 
and then you get to pay for your home. So it's just really, it's it's really sad because people don't even realize the money that they're throwing away. You could go down the road in your car and start throwing cash out the window and that's exactly what you're doing when you make a mortgage payment. Christy, I can re reiterate on that. Just last night, we did our two hour group private money club coaching. And there was a, a woman on there, her name's Tammy, and she was talking about this big real estate deal. It was a big short term rental deal she did. It was over a million bucks. And she, she had just gone through a broker and gotten a really good rate on her mortgage, but her closing costs on the mortgage were 60 plus thousand dollars. But the reason I'm saying this is she literally got caught up into this because they, they told her that she was going to save so much money. But the real truth was the day her mortgage closed, the next day she got an email that there was a new servicing bank taking over her mortgage. And most people wouldn't even think anything of that. But why would you think that would happen, folks? Why do you think when you do a mortgage with one bank, sometimes it's three months, six months, sometimes it's the next day like it was for Tammy, another bank buys that mortgage? Could it be that all the money in mortgages is in the first seven years? They're super profitable. So if you were the bank trying to sell the mortgage, you'd want to sell it really early on because you get primo dollars. And this is what people don't know, Christy. And, and listen, like, I, I got to give a personal story and a personal shout out. I can't remember when we did that video back a while ago where you taught me how to pay my mortgage off using Velocity Banking. Well, I haven't stopped. I don't know if you know that. I literally haven't changed the strategy. I haven't changed the dollar amounts. My mortgage was in the $700,000 range. It is now about my next payment in July. It will be under 400,000. Wow. So thank you. It's getting wow. close. That's awesome. That's awesome. And that's what, you know, everybody in America can do if you have a mortgage. We're just not taught how those tools work at the bank. And, you know, that seems so easy because, you know, a screwdriver and a hammer, two different tools, they have two different purposes. Uh, but most of us know how to use those tools. But when it comes to the bank, we just don't have a clue. And I feel like you were asking me earlier, you know, what is my push right now? What's the desire? What am I trying to do? I just want the American people, at least the American people, to know the, how to use those tools. And then once they know how to use the tools, if they choose to use them, then great. If they don't want to use them, that is their prerogative. But if you don't know, you don't know. Um, you know, it's so funny that you brought up your own mortgage because you just didn't know how the tools worked. I deal with mortgage loan officers, okay? People that should know what the bank offers, how to use them. Um, literally had the top mortgage loan officer in Boston. I'm not going to say the bank, big bank, literally has been doing this for 42 years and came to this little country hick in Tennessee <laughs> to learn how to pay off his debt so he can retire. And I was amazed. And so every week I get CPAs, I get loan officers that just don't understand what those tools do, how you can use them for your benefit. That is amazing to me. So uh, to hear that yours is down that low though, cause I didn't think it'd been that long either, but wow, that's amazing. Yep, I just got that statement the other day. So, you know, if CPAs and all these really high profile people are reaching out to you to teach them how to pay their mortgage off, I mean, it makes everybody wonder, like, what is the secret? Like, what is this velocity banking thing? Could you just kind of give us the, the fifth grade version of like how this works? Exactly. And, you know, it is a fifth grade a tool because it's like everybody should know this before you get out of elementary school how this works but you're just taking this huge loan that we think we're getting such a good deal on because it is the american dream to own a home right so the the deal is who, whoever the genius was that came up with mortgages to make money they have really i i can't even imagine anything out there that beats uh, your return when you make a mortgage. So 
If you take one tool, which is a simple interest tool, and replace it uh, with the amortization scheduled tool that you have been placed in, you immediately turn everything around. That's what's so amazing is I have people that'll come to me and they're like, yeah, but you know, why can't I just make extra payments on my mortgage? What's the big deal? When you see how replacing this amortized loan with your simple interest line completely eliminates interest from the very first day, there's no comparison. Everybody who turns their amortization schedule into a line you are going to cut off about half of your mortgage length just doing that. I mean, I see it, I saw it this morning, is we took a large loan mortgage, transferred it into a line to see what it would look like. And it literally went from 30 years to 13 and a half years. Wow. That's crazy. With the same monthly payment. Set, yeah, I mean, it, it's not even about the same monthly payment because when your income is going in, you're satisfying that payment when you're using a line. Sure. So, you know, not only did you get free from making monthly payments, but you got free from all of those years that you were going to be paying in monthly payments. Wow. Yeah. Keep going with that. I love this. <laughs> It's just a fact. And I mean, when you're taking a line that is simple interest, you're paying off these amortized loans. And I don't care, you know, the mortgage is probably the biggest farce or scam or whatever you want to call it. Um, you can do it with car loans as well. Um, it's just that that mortgage and they don't like for you to say that interest is front loaded. So let's say that it appears as though it's front loaded. When you can look at your statement, when it comes in, you can see that if you have a 3.4% interest rate on your mortgage and you're within the first seven years, you can look at your statement to see how much of your payment went to interest. And you know, common sense says, wait a minute, that looks like 75% of my payment went to interest, not 3.4. So people just aren't aware, you're not paying attention to what the statement says, because you're trusting that when you signed on this huge loan that they were telling you the truth. Now, it does have to be disclosed, uh, you know, the actual interest that you're play paying now. Uh, I think they came into that law like in 2017 to where now the actual amount of interest that you're paying, the percent has to be disclosed in the contract that you're signing. But, you know, every single day I'll have people go, go pull your mortgage contract and let's look at it. And every time they gasp because they were not aware that that interest rate you were quoted, whether it be 2% or in today's world, 8.125%, which is unbelievable. Um, when they see that they went from 40% to about 160% in actual interest, uh, I'm sorry, that's going to make anybody take a step back and say, what have I signed here, right? But you know, in, American, in the American's mind, um, you have to do that. If you're gonna own a home, then you have to get a mortgage. That's just the way it is. And that's the biggest lie. We do not have to move into mortgages. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that. And, you know, one of the interesting things, and I think where people get confused with velocity banking is they start, they start focusing on all the bats. You know, they start focusing on, well, what if I can't get approved? And what if this happens? And what if I lose my job and can't make the payment and this and that and the other thing? Like, what are some of the biggest pitfalls that you see with the velocity banking? Uh, I personally don't see pitfalls because when I compare tools, I know which is going to work better for me. Uh, a pitfall for anyone that's in any kind of line of credit, even credit cards, is you're a spender and you don't have your priorities straight. So if you are a spender, 
you can take a $5,000 credit card and destroy it in, within minutes at any store. Same with any personal line of credit. Same with your HELOC, your home equity line of credit. So the biggest pitfall is when a person um, doesn't know themselves well enough to realize that, hey, I've got to adult here and decide I'm not going to use my line of credit for any frivolous spending. Uh, I could give you example after example in my family where they will take their HELOC, their home equity, which should not be used for anything, but debt elimination, uh, acquisition of new properties, and they'll buy cars with it or TVs or go to the store and find a bunch of clothes on sale. I mean, that's not what a line of credit should be used for. When we are dealing with lines of credit, what I use mine for is one, it was debt elimination, and two, now I do all of my investing into the infinite policies that I have with your group constantly funding things that's going to fund my future and my children's future. That is adulting when I talk about that is we don't, you know, we, we're up to our eyeballs in debt. Let's get out of that and breathe and then do with our money what we should be doing, which is building our futures. So when you talk about pitfalls, that's the only one that I see that each individual has to determine before they get into a line of credit, whether or not they can control their spending. Now, myself, I have bought cars with my HELOCs because I know how to work them back off. Uh, you know, I have the infinite policies that can take care of the buys that I do like that. So hopefully I never have to go back to a bank for a loan at all. God forbid I ever do. But, you know, that's the point of getting out of debt and setting up these other funds for yourself so that when that time comes and you need to make a purchase, you can just go to yourself and get your loan. You don't have to go through the banks any longer. No, you're absolutely right. And, and I, I've said this before when we've done these lives. I mean, velocity banking, what you teach, and the infinite banking concept, what we teach, are like two peas in a pod. They, they literally fit perfectly together. And people that are working with you are working with you to get to the point where they then can work with me on the infinite, infinite banking concept. And people we can't work with because they're just not there yet can work with you to get them to the point where they can start being their own bank. So they really work perfectly together. And I love how you mentioned that, like you know how to use your HELOC to buy cars, but you also know how the infinite banking concept can get all the money back for every car you buy, drive and own. The, the strategies behind the two is, are actually somewhat similar, different vehicles, okay, different processes, but very similar and they all feed off of who controls the money and not only that, the velocity of the interest and where it's going. So I think that's just the simplest thing. And you know, no matter how many times you know people will watch your videos on Vantastic, which is is Christie's YouTube channel. So if you're not on there already, please check out Vantastic. She just changed up the look. It's super cool. It's like all these really great colors as the backdrops. You can't miss the page. It's Vantastic on YouTube. Check it out. But uh, there's so much to learn. And I know the stats because I, I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to economic data. And one of the big things we've been talking about a lot lately is the state of where the United States of America is, specifically households in the United States of America. Credit card debt, amongst many other debts, but we'll focus on credit card debt, is at record highs. I mean, higher than it's ever been, but growing in almost a straight trajectory up. But the, that's not the real story. The real story is when you lay over credit card debt and its growth, and you lay right next to it or over it, savings rates. So saving rate during the pandemic actually hit a high and debt was being paid down. So it was being paid down to record lows. But then all of a sudden when the pandemic ended and everybody was able to go out and fly without a mask and do all the things that they wanna do, that flipped and debt started going up and savings rates came down. Savings rates have come down to, I, I don't know where they're at today, but let's just say it's around the 3% range. Folks, your savings needs to be 10%. That's the first law of wealth. So we're at three, we need to be at 10 and your debts are high. So what, what does that tell you? Christy, if savings is going down, debt's going up, what are people doing? Listen, I I was thinking while you were talking about myself when I was just smothering in debt 
who could save in that situation? You know, when the pandemic ended and we were free to go back out and eat in restaurants and to go shopping again, I know why the debt went out of the roof. I know why it went down because people, you know, they were just paying on it. They didn't have anything they could get out and do. So I understand why we had such a major flip, but back before the pandemic, you know, 15 years ago, when I was smothering in debt, I had no savings. I did not even know how that could be possible to save. So I feel like that, uh, you know, I know what you're saying is totally true, but I feel like that people haven't changed. It's just that here we are in a situation that we don't even realize we can control by, you know, like I said, flipping a tool or two here and there that we're using at the bank. Uh, your savings would go out the roof when you learn how to use your lines of credit. And that's what I was trying to say just a minute ago is I don't want to go out and do frivolous spending when I know that I can throw $10,000 from a line of credit into an infinite policy, for example, and it's sitting over there working for me while I'm sitting here letting my income go in, my expenses come out, I'm paying that HELOC right back off doing that, but I have funded my future and I have funded uh, my beneficiaries so that, you know, in the when I do pass, they're going to be taken care of. Stuff like that has brought me such peace that if people could understand that you don't have to sit and stress about 10%, you just get your funding right with how you're using your lines of credit when you get them, it's going to take care of that 10%. And that's no longer going to be a stressor anymore. I feel like there's so much peace has come to me. Uh, forget the debt. I'm talking about funding the future. How many people do I have come to me in a day that say, I have nothing set aside for retirement, you know, and I'm 52 years old every day when they realize they can take a line and start funding those retirements, uh, they can start uh, getting those policies ready so that when they do pass, their children are taken care of. I'm sorry, for me, that was total peace. So Velocity Banking for me went from helping get my credit cards under control, giving me some room to breathe monthly to I've now funded my future and continue to, and I'm sorry, that's very exciting to me. Uh, I can totally breathe now when I think about after I'm gone, you know, what my children are going to have to deal with. And that's beautiful compared to the nothing that I had for them before. 100%. And, you know, if, if we're going to really just get down to it, so what kind of credit score do people need to have in order to do this? Okay, it depends on what tool you're looking at. So if you're wanting the HELOC, uh, a HELOC is about a 680 score. Uh, there's a first lien HELOC that pays off your home or purchases new homes. And actually there are construction loans now that are lines of credit. That's totally new to me too. So um, that score is going to have to be 700 plus which isn't bad. I mean, you know, people come to me all the time with a 730, 740 and didn't even realize that they could move into products. Is everybody's thinking 800, you know, I need to be at 800, that's not true. So if you're looking for a basic personal line of credit, you're talking about 650. So you see, we're getting pretty low. Um, credit cards, you know, anybody can get one of those starting at 630, 640, depending on the amounts they give you. So if you're in the situation like I was where I had horrible credit, I had like two credit cards that were $500 each uh, in limit, you just have to build yourself up. And with some of the things I teach about building your credit, it's not as far off as you think it is. You know, I've had uh, my clients alone jump their credit scores from 40 to 120 points by the next reporting date, wow. just playing with your credit cards a little bit. So people are discouraged because they're like, oh, you know, I'm in such a mess. It'll take me a year to get to where I can get a line of credit. That's not always true. It depends on what kind of credit problems that you're having. That's really important. And one of the things I really want to hone in on was how you, you were talking about 
your scenario where you didn't even think you'd ever be able to save. You were so buried in debt. You're like, I can't save for retirement. I can't save for a new house. I can't save for this remodel. I can't save for a car. I just have too much debt. I, I know for a fact there are a lot of people that are in that same mindset thinking that it's game over. I'm done. There's nothing I can do. So I don't, they, they almost shut down. They don't want to learn anything new. The Will Rogers quote really starts to reign true, which says the biggest problem in America is not what people don't know. It's what they think they know that just ain't so because they think they know that they can't save, but you are proof. You are that guiding light in the darkness for these folks that think that there's no hope. I hope you I hope there's a bunch of you watching this video right now that are literally sitting there saying that we can't save because we have no extra money. We're buried in debt because this is that hope. It's not even hope. This is that fact that you can. You just have to get on the right program, learn from Christy and see how Velocity Banking can get you on the other side of that. Because once you're on the other side, I mean, when you hear Christy's story, the things she's doing, I mean, it's fantastic. It's actually fantastic. But with that being said, Christy, like how do people get around your campfire? How do they learn more about you and how to work with you? Well, I have videos on YouTube uh, under the fantastic title that are everything you need to know. I'm sorry. It's free. And, you know, I do have people that come to me because they want uh, they want me to review exactly what situation they're in. Uh, they want me to help them set up a strategy. And I understand that. So I do offer services. But I learned off of one video that I saw 15 years ago. Uh, and if I can do it off of one video, anybody out there can do it with all of the videos that I have for free on the YouTube channel, okay? So it's not about seeing who you can pay enough to teach you a strategy. It's about how bad do you want it and how bad are you going to feel your way through these strategies? Whether you're dealing with mortgages, credit cards, personal loans, it doesn't matter. You can do it just like I did. And I literally had to feel my way through how to use the credit cards. Uh, how do I get a line of credit? How do I get a line of credit for my home? I mean, I had to literally creep my way up. And so every video that I have is a personal experience that I have had in my lifetime and how these things work. How do personal lines of credit link to a credit card? How do personal lines of credit link to your checking account? Um, how do you get a HELOC to link to your checking account? There's so many questions out there and I realize that and that's why each individual video is giving you a scenario so that in your situation, that scenario may apply. I love it. So folks, in the description, we'll put the link to Vantastic, her YouTube channel, and we'll give you the links on how to contact Christy so you can start working with her and get yourself on the right side of this thing. Thank you for having me. And I love what you do, Chris. I love it because I feel like that you're helping so many people get their affairs in order. And we all need that. We all just need financial peace so that we can deal with the stuff that's going on out in the world and in our families. Absolutely. Well, I love what you're doing too. And I'm so happy that we're able to do these videos together. But with that being said, folks, thanks for joining us for this episode. Check out Christy's page. And also don't forget to subscribe to this page and round kick that little bell. We'll see you in the next one. But hey, if you've liked this video, you need to check this video out right here. Get out of debt and into the pool. It's like 90 degrees here and it is time to get in the pool. With that being said, Christy, thank you so much for joining us today.